That's right. We will also illustrate what kind of comics are in Mississippi. In fact, we will introduce you to the men behind Silver Storm and Cat and Mouse, and illustrating just what it takes to put together a comic book between Roland Mann and Stephen Butler. They do everything from writing to creating to illustrating and editing. The two men join us this morning, and thank you both for being here this morning. Stephen's poised, pen in hand. He's going to do some illustrations here right. for us in a moment. Let me start by asking you how you guys got involved. You said it's been about a year now you've been involved in comic books. How did it start? Well, it all started, uh, started off collecting. I, um, as a little boy, I always read comics. And from there, I just decided that comics is what I wanted to do, and I got into creative writing. And, uh, of course, I took the courses in high school and college, and it was just kind of a, a natural progression. Uh, I always wanted to write, and by meeting Stephen in, at USM, uh, an illustrator, we just kind of got hooked together, and it was just kind of a natural thing. Now, you were telling me these comic books, Silver Storm, Cat and Mouse, can be found all across the country? Right. What determines what people buy, do you think? What makes a good comic book? Uh, what determines what they buy or what makes a good comic book? Are those two different things? Uh, right. The, the cover, uh, when they're shopping, uh, the comics are all displayed kind of face front as you go in, and the cover is really the first thing that leaps, leaps out at the buyers. If it's got a real sharp or a real uh, take a look at some of these active cover, uh, then they're going to pick it up and flip through it. And if the interior art's good enough, uh, then, they'll, then they'll pick up the comic and take it home. And uh, if it's a good story, then they'll buy the next issue. So the story really has nothing to do until they get it home. Which means, now, you do most of the writing, right. Stephen, and I, the editing. You right. are the editor. Right. And, or, excuse me, Roland. Roland and then, right. Stephen, you do the illustrating. Right. And... So your weight is is heavy. You have to carry the cover and the inside. Well, right. Uh, it's it's like what he just got to saying. Um, comic the comic book business is a, a very visual medium, and you you uh you, you go to the store to pick it up. The comic book buyer goes to the store. He picks it up by what he sees. He can't he can't really tell what the story is about, but. Uh, if the story is good enough, he'll he'll go back for it the second time. So which is created first, the pictures or the words? The words. And then you illustrate to the words that you're given, Stephen. Exactly. I All get right. a script that I, that I go by, lay it out from my head onto the paper. What are you working on over there at the moment? I'm working on a character that uh, I guess is has uh, uh, been the best uh, the best character that I've done. It's a uh, it's a character called Badger. I do it for a company called First Comics, and um, it's been the biggest success for me. And how long would it take you? You had started with a clean slate, I know, because I right. saw you walk down here. So right. you've done this just in the time that we've been in this interview. Right. One thing that uh, that you learn in working in the comic book industry or any any type of uh, art field that, that that's like this, you learn speed. <laughs> <laughs> so how long would it take to to take a comic book from conception to hitting the shelves? Uh, several months. Every, everyone has about four weeks to do their job, and there are several different people, kind of like a production line. There's a writer. There's a pencil artist, there's an inking artist, and there's a letterer. Uh, after that's finished, well, if it's in color, then there's a color uh, person who colors it for. Uh, everybody gets four weeks to do their job. And after that's finished, it's about three months before it actually hits the stands in. Goes to press and everything is right. Yeah. So you're looking at uh, from the time I do my job about six to seven months before it's on the stand. Now, where do you get your ideas when you start writing them? Where do the <laughs> ideas come from? Um, there's some bizarre things in some of these comics. I, I draw on anything and everything. Um, a lot of times, I keep little notes, uh, little pieces of paper and little notes all around my, my office and wherever I go. Whenever I get an idea, I just jot it down, and then I have a folder for each project that I work on. And uh, when I get a chance, then I put all my little pieces of paper and all my ideas into that folder. And when I sit down to work on the next issue, I just kind of put Draw them together. Draw those ideas? Yeah, try to tie it into a, a storyline that makes sense. Stephen, do you ever get a storyline and look at it and go, I can't draw this? Yes. <laughs> In fact, my first real big, my first Badger script, I might not, I might not should say this on TV, but I was like thinking, I don't know if I can handle this. But it's a job, and you, you got to go into it like, like that. So, you know. didn't think you could handle it, now you say it's one of your more successful. Right, right. It just, things like that happen. They tend to uh, happen haphazardly, sometimes for the best and sometimes not for the good. But most of the time, it's pretty good. It's been good to us. How do you promote yourself? What do you do so that you can get your comic books in stores ac across the country? That's, that's pretty much handled by the publisher. Um, we try to go to conventions. As a matter of fact, there's a... Uh, so actually, your first step is getting hooked up with a good publisher right. who's interested in your yeah, work. They do all the ad work, all the um, 
uh, all publicity, all stuff course. like that. But now we need to uh, be seen to the uh, the people who read them. And uh, there's a convention on the coast in Biloxi, like March 16th weekend, that we are going to be. They they guest. label us guest, comic book guest. And uh, we'll have a table there with some of our, our stuff set up, and the people can bring their books by, and we'll autograph them, and they'll ask us questions and things like that. Uh, we try to hit a lot of those. Uh, the convention time is the summer, and we try to go to a lot of those so we can talk to people. A lot of people will come by that have never heard of you, and they'll say, oh, well, what do you do? Right. And then you'll have to kind of, well, I do this, and well, what's it about? And you, you kind of have to go through the routine. Sell and them a little them. bit. Right. And then if they're interested enough, they'll go into the... To a, a dealer and, and buy a copy and get, come back and get you to sign it, of course. So. Where could we find these comic books here in Jackson? Uh, the Star Store is a, a, a comic book store here in Jackson. Um, so they're the only place they're the only place that I know of that, that carries them. And if they don't have them, just tell them to order it because they can get it. They're real easy to get for a comic book store. Um, so. Stephen, can I ask you to, to take that drawing and I want to compare what you have done just sitting here in sure. the last five minutes to the front of this cover. I think sure. that's fascinating. There you go. We can get a shot of those. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> and there, of course, is the cover of the comic. That is terrific. That's basically how they all start from the raw idea to the finished product. Very, very interesting line of work. And gentlemen, thank you for being with us this morning. Continued success in selling the comic books. I'll give you back you. your pads, Ethan. Continue to sketch, Stephen. <laughs> we will be right back. Thanks again. That was great.